Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to we're out the plan for tonight. We're going a different direction. Go to Matthew chapter 22. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. First of all, I apologize. First, you can hold your place. They were coming right back to that. But first, we're going to go to Galatians chapter five. And then we'll come back to Matthew chapter 22. Oh, how I love your word, Lord. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> man. Oh, man. Okay, slow down, slow down, slow down. Woo! It's coming so fast and furious. I got to slow myself down here. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Wow. All right. Galatians 5, chapter, I mean, <laughs> chapter 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision. I'm going to start again. Okay. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision. In other words, he's referencing the old law. Whereas circumcision was a requirement of the law. <clears throat> and he's saying, in Jesus, um, Circumcision or uncircumcision, meaning not being circumcised, that's not where the power is. Okay. <clears throat> but faith, which works by Love. That is where the power is. The power is not in whether you're circumcised, whether you're circumcised, or whether you're uncircumcised. And and he goes on. I don't recall if it's in this chapter or if it's another area, but he says, "Look, listen." If you're already circumcised, fine. If you're not circumcised, don't sit there and become circumcised thinking that that's going to do anything. That's not where the power is. That's not what's going to produce results in your life. Okay? It's, it's equivalent... <clears throat> To where Jesus chastised, I believe it was the Pharisees, that, that made such a big deal about washing the hands, 
washing the outside of the cups and, and going through these ceremonial, I guess you call them tasks. But, but the point was, they, they, what, what was happening was they were majoring on things that were actually very minor. So they were making a very, very big deal about circumcision. They were making a very, very big deal about making sure you always wash your hands before you, making sure you always wash the outside of the cup before you drink it. And what Paul is saying here is he's saying, don't get hung up on these small matters from the law. While you're ignoring the very thing that upholds it all. And that is faith that works by love. And in fact, when Jesus is speaking to them, he, he's telling them that they're ignoring the weightier matters of the law. And the weightier matters are the matters of the heart. <clears throat> A person could be an absolute expert in the principles of God. But yet have no power. You say, well, how is that possible? The principles are important. We must know them. We must, we must, because we must understand how the kingdom of God works and how the kingdom of God operates, especially because the kingdom of God operates so differently than the world system, than what many of us are grown up to understand in terms of the way things work. It's backwards. In the kingdom, you give to increase. In the world, it's the opposite. In the kingdom, it's all about serving. Whereas in the world, it's all about getting power and making others serve you. In the kingdom, it's about forgiving when people wrong you. Whereas in the world, it's all about getting revenge and making them pay for what they did. See, it's all opposite. So we must know the principles. We must. We must know how the kingdom operates. That is not where it stops. And, and that can be a real point of struggle for people. Because sometimes people will take the principles of God and the way that God has set things up to operate
And they'll try to operate God's principles without love. Let me, let's look at 1 Corinthians 13. And let's look at verse 1. <clears throat> Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, I'm just making noise. He's, he's saying, I could speak as angels. But if I don't have love, it's just noise. But he's speaking. He's speaking the words of angels. But without love, it's just noise. It's just noise. Though I have the gift of prophecy, look at this, and I understand all mysteries, and I have all knowledge. And if I have all faith, you could have all the faith in the world. So that you could remove mountains. But if you don't have love. He says, I am nothing. He says, without love. I am nothing. Without love, I am nothing. That is a strong statement. <clears throat> he said, I could prophesy like nobody else. I could understand all the mysteries. I could have all knowledge. I could have all the faith and remove mountains everywhere. But if I don't have love, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without love. <clears throat> And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have not love, it profits me nothing. None of these things work without love. Not faith, not prophecy, not the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. You could have all the knowledge of God in the world. But if you don't have a love that absolutely consumes you in every way. If you don't have a love that consumes your mind and your thinking and your words, and all of your actions, Everything else, everything else means nothing. <clears throat> and he goes on to describe love. 
in verse eight, he says, love never fails. Love never fails. Prophecies, they'll fail. Tongues, they'll stop. Knowledge, it'll vanish away. And drop down to verse 13. Now look at this. And now abides faith, hope, and love. These three. So you can see here faith, hope, and love. <clears throat> These are three pillars in the foundation of the kingdom. Faith, hope, love. Those are your three pillars. Those are the three pillars of your foundation for Christianity. But look what he says next. But the greatest of these The greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. <clears throat> you could say, well, wait a minute. How can you say that, Kyle? Don't you know that Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? He did say that. And one could argue that says that faith is the most important thing. And I wouldn't disagree with that person. Because based on the scripture that they're talking about, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Now here's the reality. The greatest could be faith. But what makes faith work? Love. So yes, when Jesus comes back, he is going to be looking for faith. So we better have our faith tightened up and strong and in place. <laughs> I mean, we better. But you can't have faith that works and is effective and is powerful unless you have love. I can prove this so simply in the Gospels. So frequently, Jesus had no plan in the moment to help the people. But yet, he was moved with compassion. And compassion is just another word for love. And his love that he would be moved with for the people. 
he couldn't help but use his faith to help them. He, he had, there was no limit to his faith. But if he does not have that all-consuming, burning love inside of him, his faith is not sprung into action in those circumstances. Because many, many, many of those circumstances, he did not have a plan or was not intending to pray for the people or to heal the people or to set them free. Not because he didn't want to, but because it wasn't in his plan. He had other plans at other times to do that. But there were so many times that, that he was just drawn into it because of his love for the people and because of his love for the Father. <clears throat> So you have faith, hope, and love. Your three pillars as your foundation for Christianity. And the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. <clears throat> we talked last week about Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness, and he fasted for 40 days. And after the 40 days were ended, <laughs> now here Mr. Devil shows up face to face with Jesus. I mean, he had him. I mean, he had Jesus locked in his sights. Huh? He had him. This was his shot. This was his opportunity. The opportunity that he had been waiting 30 years for. Remember, the moment when he found out that Jesus had been born, he immediately started killing every baby in the area. It was two years old and under because he wanted Jesus dead. But he wasn't able to get to him. You see that? He wasn't able to get to him. But yet here, in this moment, he finally got to him. And you know he had to have been so excited that he finally had his shot. <clears throat> and in that moment, he's got Jesus face to face. He lines up for his best shot to take him out, to kill him. And what does he use as his weapon? <clears throat> he used his words. He didn't try to use power. You know, he, he didn't phys physically try to overpower him. He used his words. Because words are the most powerful things that exist. 
Now, why am I saying that? <clears throat> I'm saying that because we have to remember. that words are carriers, they're containers. Every time we speak words out of our mouth and they go forth from us, every person that hears those words that touches their eardrums they don't just hear the sound of the words but they're touched by what is contained in our words they are touched by what our words are carrying. Right now, as I am speaking these words, these words are coming up out of my heart, out of my mouth, carrying faith in God and carrying love. So as these words are being received by you, you're not just hearing the sounds of the words. but you are being touched by the faith that is loaded into these words. And you are being touched by the very love of God that is loaded in these words. So what I'm saying to you What I'm saying to you is what if every word that you speak is loaded with love? How would that impact? the one you're talking to. If every word that you speak is loaded with love. And what if every word that you spoke was loaded with faith. Now, now here's the key in all of this. Now, here's the key. (laughs) 
in order for our words to be loaded with love, our hearts must be loaded with love. In Matthew chapter 12, in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 33, he says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. I remember I talk about that all the time. I said, listen, we can always get a very clear understanding about where we are in our faith and about where we are in our walk with God based upon the fruit that we are producing, based upon the state of our lives. If our lives are in chaos, then we can know Okay, something is not right here in our alignment with God. <clears throat> Perhaps we're not believing his word. Perhaps we're not truly yielding to him. Perhaps we're not doing things the way that he commands us to do them. Maybe we're trying to do things our own way and then asking God to bless it. But we can always understand and get a clear picture of, of, <clears throat> of the state of our faith based upon the fruit that we are producing, based upon the results that we are producing. Oh, generation of vipers, <clears throat> how can you, being evil, Speak good things. So he's saying an, e an evil heart, and now remember, we hear evil heart, and we think one thing. But God is talking about another thing. <laughs> See, we hear evil heart, and we think someone that's a terrible person, we think someone that's a murderer, or an adulterer, or, you know, violent, or angry, and mean, and this, and this, and that. But Jesus actually says that an evil heart is a heart of unbelief. So he's saying, how can you, being evil, and having an evil heart of unbelief, speak good things you can't if you have an evil heart of unbelief all you can speak is unbelief <clears throat> that's all you can speak why For out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Or out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So in other words, 
whatever is in our hearts in abundance is what will come out of us. Now watch this. <clears throat> a person <clears throat> A person could even be speaking words that sound like they're positive words, but yet they're carrying strife, or they're carrying unbelief, or they're carrying division. or they're carrying selfishness. And so even though it might seem like they're saying the right thing, those words are carrying something else. That's how manipulation works. See, people that are very good at manipulating, they use ordinary words, but yet those words are carrying something else. <clears throat> so, so, Our heart is consumed with love. <laughs> if our heart and our mind is overtaken and consumed with love, then the words that come out of us are going to be loaded with love. Now remember, <clears throat> love is not selfish. Because oftentimes people can mistake human love with God's love. But human love always fails. Because even though human love can seem good, it is still rooted in selfishness. The only love that is genuine and true and pure and real is the love of God. Because the love of God is unconditional. So the love of God does not say, I will love you, but only if you do the things that I like. No, no, no. That's human love. That's love that's based upon condition. That's love that's based upon behavior. That's love that's based upon how you treat me. You treat me well, then I will love you. You treat me wonderfully, and I will be happy to love you. <laughs> but see, that's not love. That's not love. The love of God loves people no matter what they do, no matter how they treat us. Let's see, I think this is in Luke 6. 
Let me just see if I can. Um... Well, it is, it is. Um... There's another one. I, I, I believe it's in Matthew. Where is that? What if it's in the exact same spot? <laughs> that might even be where we just are right now. Let me look for a second. Mm. No. That's okay. We can look at Luke 6. I mean, it's going to give us... It's going to give us the same principle. Um, so in Luke 6, um, <clears throat> verse 22, he says, uh, Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Verse 27, he says, but I say unto you which hear, uh, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. Now, he goes on to say, ooh, ooh, hold on, I, mean, I think I may have just, no. but, what, but what he's saying, <clears throat> there's, another, there's another place where he's, he's giving the same sermon, and he's saying to them, He's saying to them to love your enemies, pray for them that, you know, spite, despitefully use you, so on and so forth. But then he goes on to say, he says, he says, well, listen, what thank have you if you love those that love you? He says, don't even the sinners do that? And the unbelievers? <laughs> don't they? love the people that love them well yeah of course they do because they're operating on human love and not god's love so he is saying no 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 that's not the kind of love that we operate oh come on man that is not how we live that's not how we do it we love no matter what anybody does to us. We never stop loving them. Now look, if people are mistreating you, you may have to back away. I mean, loving people does not mean that you allow them to, 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 continue to hurt you that that's not what that's about if 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 someone's hurting you i mean if they're being rude if they're being mean if they're doing things that are hurting you love is not being stupid and going and continuing to put yourself in that situation so they can continue to harm you no that's foolishness but love does not hold anything against them. Love does not speak a negative word about them in any way. Love does not hold any negative or ill feelings towards them. Love does not attack them. Love does not fight back and try to make them pay for what they did. Love does not try to hurt them back. No. 
Love says, listen, okay, fine. That's all you're going to be. I love you anyways. I love you no matter what. I maybe can't be around you all the time, but I still love you. I bless you. And I'll tell you right now, if you are having difficulty with anybody, I'm talking about difficulty in your own heart, where you feel like maybe it's hard to forgive because they've really hurt you badly. Or maybe, maybe, you know, you find yourself just constantly still feeling negative feelings towards them, whatever it might happen to be, in any kind of a situation where there's difficulty. I'm telling you right now, pray for them and ask the Lord to bless them. I mean, bless them, pour love out towards them in prayer, speak positive love words about them, speak faith-filled words about them, and you will find that negative, those negative feelings just over time drifting away and easing and being released as you do that. Because you can't love somebody and pray for them and bless them and stay mad at them. You can't love them and bless them and pray for them and still hold on to feelings of hurt. You see, I've done that so many times in so many situations. I don't care who it is, people at work, you know, Stacy and I are, you know, getting at, you know, going at each other, man, I immediately start praying for her. But whoever it is, I start praying for them, blessing them. And I'm telling you, it just, it changed the whole thing. And then what you realize is because you are doing that, man, a lot of times, I'm not saying always, but I'm saying a lot of times their attitude will change towards you because your faith is causing the dynamics of that relationship a lot of times to be different by praying for them, loving them, blessing them, asking the Lord to pour his favor on them, you know, things like that. <clears throat> so I kind of got off on a little bit of a tangent there. I don't know where that came from, but, um, but my point is, you know, my, my, my point is, God's way. God's love is love that loves people no matter what they do. His love is not conditional. His love is not conditional. His love does not say to you, I will love you. But only if you do what makes me happy. <laughs> no, man, that's manipulation, man. That's not what... That's not God. He loves no matter what. Now, let me make a, now let me say this. Now, let me make a very clear distinction here. There's a big distinction between God's love and God's blessing. His love is unconditional. The blessing is not. The blessing is not. I know some people might not like that, but it's a fact. The blessing is not unconditional. It has conditions. If it didn't, then everybody would be blessed. 
but everybody's not blessed. So we, so in order to walk in the blessing, we must meet the conditions. Now, the one thing I will say is, while God loves us unconditionally, you will feel the flow of his love much easier when you're walking according to his word. Because even though his love is there, it, it it can be difficult to connect because if our heart is not right, it makes it difficult to connect with his love. <clears throat> um, wait, no, no. no. Let's see. Now, here we go. I'll show you this. I'm going to prove this out right now. Okay. John 14, verse uh, 20. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So we understand if we're not walking in love, Wow. If we are not walking in love, we won't have God's presence. Now think about what we just said a few minutes ago. Our job and our duty is to love everybody. But our requirement is not to do whatever anybody else wants in order to get their love, nor are we to keep ourselves in a situation where it might not be good for us, it might not be beneficial. He's saying the same thing right here. He's saying, listen, if you want my presence, then you have to love me. If you want me to manifest myself to you, then you have to love me. And how you love me is by obeying my commandments. <clears throat> let's, let's keep reading because this is so good. I mean, this whole, oh my, I tell you this, I know I say this all the time, but this whole section right here from John 13 to John 17 is just, I mean, oh man, we could just read this and just read it and just be happy because it's loaded. And this is Jesus sitting down with the disciples the night before he goes to the cross. This was his last. Oof, that's so heavy. This is his last message to them. And he and he talks to them for four chapters worth of insight and revelation. And who knows what else was said that didn't get recorded? I mean, this is just what was recorded. Woo! Okay, I gotta. All right. <clears throat> So, so, so he that loves me, okay, let me read the whole thing again. 
He that has my commandments and keeps them, or he that, in other words, keeps them, meaning he that does them. He it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. See that? So his love is always there. But it may not always be received. doesn't nowhere does it say i won't love you we must love him walk in his commandments if we want our hearts to be filled with his love if we want our hearts to be consumed with his love, and if we want his tangible manifested presence. Because remember, John 4, 8, and I'm sorry, 1 John 4, 8, and 1 John 4, 16 says, God is love. <clears throat> so when his manifested presence shows up, what is it? It's love. It's love. So if we want our hearts to be consumed with his love, we must love him and we must walk in his commandments. We must obey the word of God. We must live by the word of God. And see, that's what Matthew 22, I told you we'd come back there. I thought it'd be earlier than this, but we're going back now. Matthew 22, verse 37. Now they're, they're asking him, okay, the, asking him, what's the greatest commandment? He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is just like it. <clears throat> you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And John 13, 34, he takes it another to another level in terms of the commandment of love. And in John 13, 34, he says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. So first he says, okay, love. Now look now. There's two levels. <laughs> there's, two, there's two levels of love here. There's loving others as you love yourself. Okay. And then there's loving others as God loves you. In other words, loving others with the love of God. And that's on a whole nother level than loving others as you love yourself. Huh. Okay. Well, I just, okay. I don't know. I just, it just lifted right there. I think that's it. Boy, I, I didn't even, I didn't even get to the offering. I didn't get to the communion. I didn't get any of that. <clears throat> but 
Um, I just, that's it. That's it for tonight. So take your communion, do your communion tonight <clears throat> on your own. At least I recommend it. Um, well, I had, I had such a good offering message. I was really pumped to share it, but, but uh, another time, another time. Praise the Lord. Boy, that was powerful, man. That, that really, that was really good. I mean, I heard him when we were praying, I heard him say it. He said, love is the key. It's, it's, I'm telling you, love is a key that gets so overlooked. So there you go. All right. Well, hey, with that, I love you guys. <laughs> I really do. I love you guys. But listen, I love you, man. God loves you. I mean, man. Just get your heart so consumed with that love. Well, I want to go into so much more, but the Lord shut it down for tonight. But I'm going to, I got so much more I want to talk about that. I just had more come up right there, but we got to follow the Lord. Hmm. Last thing he let me say this. When you walk in the love of God, you will begin to realize that it protects your heart. It protects your heart from getting hurt. It protects your heart from getting in strife with people. It protects your heart from, from getting offended. It protects your heart from, from, from having a low um, like a low self-image from a low self-esteem, a low, you know, like from feeling inferior. The love of God, the love of God gets all that out. Maybe we'll talk more about that next week, but the love of God gets rid of all of that. Man, it protects your heart. It's the greatest thing you can do is consume your heart with the love of God. All right, that's it. Love you guys.